Hey everyone, um, today we're doing an update to my previous video on my uh, home media setup. Um, previously we've kind of gone through what I had, which I'll kind of quickly go through. I'm using a Moran's SR7012 as my preamp. I've got a wire for sound, uh, MC7150 for my height and surround amplification. Uh, and those are putting out uh, 150 um, watts per channel at 8 ohms. And then last and least is the uh, Emotiva XPA 5 Gen 3, which is recently upgraded from uh, the Emotiva XPA 3 Gen 1. And this, this, this video is going to talk a bit about um, the experiences and difference between the Generation 1 versus Generation 3. Uh, in terms of the XPA amp. So uh, uh, off the bat, I'm going to talk and uh, start with the uh, build quality. So typical Emotiva, the chassis provide a nice solid feel. It's got these um, mounting ears. As you can uh, remember from the previous um, video, the ears are in silver uh, in Generation 1. And since the Gen 1, the Gen 2, and the 3 have the black mounting ear covers and obviously these could be removed if you wanted the ears to go with it and, and for me I, I'm just using the rack itself these rack shelves which work great and then they give me the flexibility of um, changing devices without um, buying different ears every time I change my device you can see my uh, I am using a new uh, gimbal so it's kind of acting up a little bit this is the first time using it um, from the video some of the um, readers have previously given me some feedback on the shakiness of some of the previous video and I'll upgrade it to a, a physical three axis uh, gimbal, which I can do a separate review after I had some more use with it. Um, but going back to this build quality, typical Emotiva quality, um, quite good. All the inputs and outputs are the same. Not going to take it out since I got this nice set up, nicely set up already. Uh, but basically still got the RCA um, input as well as the XLR with switches. Also it's got the um, trigger, um, which is the same as previous. So I didn't have to change it, it up any of the wiring. Um, just remove from the old and plug into the new. So that was quite straightforward. The other thing I want to talk about is uh, weight. The original Gen 1 um, XPA3, which is a three channel amp, um, weigh in at 57 pounds. Um, this puppy, which is the Gen 3, um, with five channels, actually weighs less, comes in at the 53 pounds. And one of the primary reasons for that is the, um, the type of amplification, um, the class has changed. The original Gen 1 was using a class AB, which a lot of the audio files are looking for in terms of being get, able to get the purest, um, best quality, um, I guess, possible. And, and, and Emotiva has kind of gone away from that class AB um, amplification into now what they call the class H, which is, uh, a, a, it's got a switching power. So what this does is on lower power, it runs on lower power grid. And then when you crank it up, it actually needs more power. It'll do actual switching. And then it's all supposed to be transparent. You're not supposed to be hearing any of the differences. Uh, and so far through my uses, I haven't been able to tell if when it's doing any swapping at all. So that they did a good job there. So that kind of concludes the uh, quality. Um, and, and, and you know, the weight is primarily due to the um, application class change and the components required for that. I want to go on talk a bit about the uh, initial um, differences when I plug this in. So straight in, replace the wire, plugged it in, turn it up and immediately I notice there's a bit of difference in terms of output and output in terms of volume. Um, in the past, um, in my with my emotive with my uh, Moran's, I've only had to turn it up to about 35 or so volume to, to listen to and watch movies comfortably. Um, and and with this new app direct replacement, I've had to crank it up about 10 notches to about 45. And this is out of, I think, a scale of up to 80 uh, in, in the Moran's. And I was quite um, surprised. I mean, I wasn't completely surprised in terms of like the fact that you need to turn it up more. And, and the main reason I kind of expected that was because the gain on the new Gen 3 is a little bit less 
than the original Gen 1. The Gen 1 have a gain of 32 decibels and the new Gen 3 is actually down in terms of gain to 29 decibels, right? So, so you would think from well, 3 decibels, you know, can I actually tell the difference? And, and in summary, yes, I can tell you that you do hear the difference uh, using the same exact setting um, as the, the what my brands had with the old Gen 1. So, um, and, and, and so, so that's that. And the other thing I want to kind of highlight is in terms of power, the original Gen 1 was rated at 200 watts per channel, 8 ohms all channel um, running. While this new one, the Gen 3, because of its switching power, it's more efficient. Um, it's able to put out 250 watts for the XPA5 that I've got here. Um, running so, so that's quite um, significant right given that it's got 50 watts of difference and I just switched on as you can tell I just want to let you see that you do see the five LED light um, coming on and the previous one had three just because the number channel that's all the same hasn't changed much from that um, but in terms of out output power it's got 50 watts more however due to the lower gain I actually the, the volume is actually lower and then what I had to do to correct that is I had to go back and turn to my Moran's and actually run the uh, Odyssey again just to so that it can adjust to the new volume. And obviously with that, you put a mic in its place in multiple listening positions and it'll listen to all your speakers doing its thing. And ultimately, after I ran Odyssey, the um, what it did was the Moran's turned up the uh, preamp output to kind of adjust and cater for the new uh, gain of the new amp. And as a result, now I'm back to listening at the same volume that I was with the previous um, Emotiva Generation 1. So for those of you that are uh, wondering why you don't notice improvement when you straight change com uh, components, one thing I always recommend is run your um, Odyssey or whatever room correction software that you've got with your component because it certainly does make um, quite a bit of difference. So um, in the end, um, in summary wise, I think um, the both amp are, are, are going to give you, you know, whatever generation you got, as long as they, they're coming from a reputable uh, manufacturer and, and similar spec, you're not going to be able to, I'll be hard pressed to say that you can hear a difference. At least listening to um, maybe music wise you can tell more but like for movie and, and effect wise I, I i'd be hard pressed if anybody said they can actually hear the difference between um, the gen 1 versus the gen 3 and the volume difference the gain difference that you can um, accommodate and cater to as long as you run your odyssey or room correction software to adjust for that so so that's something that could be fixed um and um other one last observation so in terms of like the the fact that it's got the lower gain i also feel like it has a lower noise floor so the new generation i feel it's quieter so when you have very low volume in movie soundtrack or or when when there's no sound at all coming through you hardly hear any anything coming out of the speakers well i think in the old gen one i think you could still hear a, a hint of hiss from your power line noise so that's that's also something to be know of so in the end do i think it's an upgrade um i don't think if you're going from like for like for example three channel to three channel i don't think you're gonna um realize or, or, or um, understand or see any actual gains and upgrades um, but if you are uh, and happen to be wanting to move from a fewer channel to more channel um, just so you can kind of consolidate your application. So I've gone from a three channel to five channel. So for me, that, that would be the upgrades, the increase in channel and, and output, which I guess, you know, from 200 watt to 250. But you do lose that um, power wattage output if you go into the seven channel, because that's only putting out 200 per channel. And if you go down for and replace life for life at three channel for XPA3, um, Gen 3, you're going to see, I think, 275 watts per channel, all three channel driven at 8 ohms. Um, but again, I wouldn't upgrade just for that power gain because I, I, I seriously doubt you'll hear that um, um, additional power unless you really crank it up. So so um, I wouldn't recommend an upgrade if you're just upgrading from like to like. But if you happen to want more channels, I would definitely consider um, an upgrade. 
certainly bring it up to newer technology. Um, you do lose that audio file class AB, but running class H, one of the positive thing is the temperature is much lower. Um, their heat output um, on this unit is much lower than the previous one. Uh, I don't have an exact measurement, but what I do have is I have these um, temperature sensing fans set up in between each amp. And then they ran off the uh, AC Infinity temperature sensor here, which I have to probe going to each unit. And I can tell you the fan doesn't kick on as much as before. So that's always a positive thing. Okay, that kind of summarizes the video. I uh, hope this is helpful for you. Uh, we'll talk next time.